Okay, so we go to number 17. 17. Uh, tonight we have to, the second part, to understand what is the concept of nature. Uh, nature. We speak about philosophy of nature. So what is nature? So we, to understand that, we can compare nature with, with what is not nature. We call it art or artificial. So what is nature opposed to what is uh, natural, uh, artificial. Thing existing by nature, thing existing by art. Um, for example, an animal huh? and all the parts of animal, my fingers, my, my eyes, all that are nature, huh? plants and mineral. But on the other side, we have art, we have technology, so all the artifacts. Huh? Uh, nature, things are seen to have within them a tendency to change or to motion. So the characteristic of nature is change, motion. But motion by themselves, huh? within them, internal. We see sometimes spontaneous motion. Huh? And spontaneity is a characteristic of nature. A characteristic of nature. Something natural. For example, a flower grows. Are you obliged every morning to, to, uh, to make an effort to uh, grow, grow, grow? No, it grows by itself. Huh? Okay? A characteristic. But the other here has no tendency, no tendency to change by themselves. They, can, they cannot move by themselves. For example, a chair will not move by itself. But a cat, a dog, a fish, a, a mosquito, a mosquito will fly by, by themselves. By reason of themselves, not accidentally, by reason of themselves. That means the reason of their motion is in themselves, by reason of themselves. Here, not by vision of themselves. Because they cannot move, take initiative. In fact, there is no spontaneity in uh, artifacts. artifacts. Huh? Okay? So, definition. You have here a definition from Father Wallace, that in your book, huh? in the book of Father Wallace. He says, uh, is the principal cause of motion or of rest? in that in which it is primarily by reason of itself and not accidentally. Well, I explain that. First, motion uh, refers to any kind of corporeal change, accidental or substantial. So a change can be accidental. For example, change the color. Huh? I have white, I have gray, uh, uh, brown air, dark air, eh? after that I have a white air or no air, <laughs> no? Uh, and not accidentally. Okay. Uh, for example, change of color, huh? wait, or change of state from living to death, uh, from living to death, or from non-living to living. You know, when a, a child conceived, uh, he was not living. Now he is living. Secondly, also rest, because you know. Rest imply the attainment of an end, which is the change uh, where the change was directed to. In fact, a change is tending toward an, an end. When we study, we will study philosophy uh, of man and uh, human act. We will see that in the human act, we call that the enjoyment. Uh, when you have your cap and gown, uh, they, will, they will play my proper circumstance. Uh, La, 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 la. And your cap and gown, ah, enjoy. You are at rest. Huh? 
Or even to, you know, when you, you drive a car, if you want to stop, you have to make a, an effort, huh? a change. So rest is also a change from motion to non-motion, huh? okay? But um, a continue primarily excludes a secondary uh, principle and forms that make things artificial. Uh, that means, for example, the change of color, huh? okay? Exclude also the product of violence. We studied that at the end of the class about violence. Violence opposes nature. And nature uh, is we do something conform to nature, but we can force nature. For example, in the, in the 19th century in China, the criterion of the beauty for f f women was to have little feet. So they put uh, their feet when they were young in a, in a form. And uh, the, the women was growing, but the feet was, uh, and when they were adult, they were little feet, and men like that, and not why, because they were that, that's dangerous to receive a kick. <laughs> so that we can force them, we can form the uh, force nature, violence of course we can force somebody to take a decision against his will, that is against nature because it is the nature of man to be free. Huh? Uh, and, and by reason of itself, huh? not accidentally, huh? from within, huh? okay? to exclude chance. And we we'll speak about chance in a few minutes. Well, here, St. Thomas is a quotation from St. Thomas by Father Grony. He said, if, if a doctor is sick and he heals himself, huh? uh, using a good remedy, but he, he, you know, he, um, he, he will be healed by nature, but as a doctor, he is uh, an artist. He, 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 he healed by heart because he is art, huh? by artifacts. He uses remedies. Huh? So he is at the same time. It's not. It's not. The, you see, it's not the essence of a doctor to be sick. It's not the essence of a sick person to be a doctor. So it is accidental that the doctor is sick, and that if the doctor takes care of himself, it is accidental. Huh? Okay. He will, if, if, the, if his body is ill, it is because of nature, uh, but he can use also some artifact. Okay, I will not insist on that. Now, other definition for nature. Uh, I go to number two. The essence considered as the internal principle of growth. For here I come back to what we study in logic. When we study definition, you remember what this, huh? We are searching for the oneness of a thing. <coughs> you remember I say man is a rational animal, huh? And we saw that man is a rational animal. Rational animal was the oneness, the quiddity, huh? the quiddity, the quiddity of a thing. And when we saw that, uh, we saw that uh, at the level of logic, huh? definition, huh? okay? In that definition, the rational animal is nothing like the existence. We saw that rational animal can be also considered as the essence of man. Huh? We saw that. Huh? That means man is a rational animal, but he is able to receive existence. Existence is not in the essence of man. So a rational animal is the essence of man, not including existence. Therefore, if man exists, he receives existence. So we speak about essence in relation with existence. Here, interesting. Essence plays the role of potency and existence, the role of act. No? Because essence receives existence. So existence is determining essence. Animal, rational, rational animal is, is a concept for all eternity. Huh? But when you were born in 1945 or 1950, I don't know when, you pass from potency to act. Your essence, rational animal, become you. You see? So existence is determining. We can say that existence is to essence like act to potency. Now, if I consider rational animal, 
I say, ah, man is an animal. He eats, etc. He sleeps. And he rationally uses his mind. So he has activity. Activities. So rational animal has principle of activity. I call that nature. You remember that? Nature is the essence as principle of activity. And that it is activity. It is the meaning here. That is the meaning here. Essen, uh, nature is the essence of a thing as principle of activity. For example, a cat of some activities that a dog does not have. Because the nature of the cat is not the same nature as a dog. And then as property that um, a dog does not have, for example, the property of able to laugh, to talk, to read, uh, to take a decision because of his rationality. That is the meaning we have here. You know? I told you that what we study in logic will be used in the future. We have an example here. Okay? Um, number three. Essence or substance, I know the word was that, was, uh, substance. Substance, it is what is under the accident. So we can say the same thing, we can say huh, the substance huh, is, uh, is determined by accident, but, uh, but the substance gives accident their reality also. There is a, a, a different point of view. Uh, um, consider as the intrinsic principle of activity, uh, excuse me, yeah, um, wait a minute, oh, oh, yeah, essence or, or substance, huh? yeah. essence or substance, here yeah, is nature, huh? nature, okay. in fact, in, in the substance we have the nine categories, in the nine categories we have a particular passion, action and relation, huh? position, uh, possession, they are something, uh, operation, no? even the quality and the capacity, the power, uh, qualities. Okay. See, here we can, we can see that substance and nature, in a sense, are almost synonymous, but there is a distinction. Huh? The same reality, rational animal. Um, number four, the intrinsic first principle of the specific, specific operations, the same thing. What is the word coming? Huh? Activities, operation, huh? activities, operation. What is that? It, nature. Nature is the source of operation. Huh? The characteristic of nature is activities. So when we want to know, the, we want to discover what is the nature of a thing, we must go to the activities. And when we want to define an animal or a person or a thing, we can define that by its activities. Huh? The causality, efficient cause, huh? final cause. Okay. Okay. I go to page 122. Um, in number six, Another meaning here, the totality of objects in the universe. Uh, here nature is another meaning. Nature here means uh, the tree, trees, flowers, uh, mountains, volcanoes, uh, stars, the galaxy, all that. That means it includes everything which, is, which exists materially. Huh? Okay? That is another meaning of nature. The, and one today, that is ambiguity. When today we, uh, we say we must obey the law of nature, what kind of nature? Because we have nature uh, 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 as uh, the effect of uh, a creator. It is, uh, we, for example, I must act according to my nature. Yeah. I must be rational. I must, I must act, I feed my body, all that. And that is the dimension of ethics. Huh? Ethics is based on that. Then the nature, the nature as expressing huh? the expression of the, the, the work of the creator. And from nature, we go to the creator. Huh? We obey the natural law. But the other meaning now, or number six, 
nature now is the universe. And when you say obey the law of nature, in fact, you say obey the law of physics. The law of physics. Gravity, uh, hydrostatic, etc. You know? Uh, calorimetry. Obey the law. And that is not the same meaning. We say the, use the same words, but we don't use, we don't mean the same thing. Today, when the people speak about law of nature, many times they speak only about physical law, the law of chemistry, physics, biology. You know? And for example, if we speak about uh, sexuality or reproduction, here for our philosophy, we are here. We have to conform my sexuality to my reason, to my nature, as as the creation of God. And here we have to act according to the law of nature, the same law, obey a cat and dog and rabbits. You know? And that is the tendency today to reduce that to that. So there is no more, for many, there is no more uh, moral dimension in nature. But that is the ambiguity of Catholic when we speak about nature. What kind of nature? Because on the other side, they don't think the same thing as we think. And the necessity to precise the definition of term. But for St. Thomas, for Aristotle, for uh, the Catholic Church, nature is here. Huh? And it, what constitutes my essence as principle of my activity? Therefore, I must act according to what I am. But here, I must act according to what the nature is, not the, the nature. You understand, huh? That means I don't refer to a divine authority, author of nature. I, revive, I, re, I refer to the nature with a big N, if you want, the source of energy, huh? the source of force, the source of dynamic. But no, we don't refer to it. In fact, I refer to your book of physics, biology. <laughs> that is the new Bible. Huh? The, new, the book of ethics, is, for them, is there. In fact, our ethics depends on our concept of nature. <coughs> if we accept the concept of nature as principle of activity, including my reason, my, rest, my, uh, my uh, freedom, my will, it's not the same concept if I say I obey the law of nature. For example, here we say uh, eat reasonably, eat reasonably. That means uh, use your reason to eat. Here we say eat in such a way you will not be sick. <laughs> you see the distinction? Here we say uh, well, we have sexual relation in that, in that according to, to, uh, to continue the, 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 the species, huh? to accomplish the will of God, the mission in the Bible, and yet multiply. Here we say, uh, you know, uh, use the, uh, don't, uh, don't take care of that, use only your impulsion and, uh, you know, there is no problem for the con birth control here, no problem. Here there is a problem. The same word, nature. So the word is very ambiguous to the enemy. We must be aware of that is sometimes people I think they don't realize that. We use the same word, we don't have the same content. Okay? Um, now on that page also, uh, page uh, 123, uh, Jolivet, Monseigneur Jolivet is a French author, he gave here uh, the, almost the same definition, but I want to see that with you. First, Nature is, a, in a strict meaning, the essence uh, of a being considered a principle of operation that corresponds to Father Wallace number three. In logic, huh, it is the definition, whatness, what is the essence of a thing, what is the definition of a thing. Three, in ethics, the principle of operation independent of human free will. That is here. The principle of operation independent of my human free will. I did not choose to become a man. No? I received, uh, I, you know, contrary to Jean Paul Sartre, Jean Paul Sartre would say, I, I, be, I make my own essence. Now, we are, we are men. We did not choose. 
to be a man or to be a rabbit or to be a, a camel. So instinct is as a fact of nature, and will as nature tell the good. In fact, in that position here, when you speak about rational animal, we, we recognize the interactive dimension of human being, interactive dimension. In physics here, we don't recognize that. Man is a machine, and man is, there is no the spiritual dimension. That's it. In fact, here is the materialistic position, is it? Because even the Marxists, they speak about the law of nature, to respect the law of nature. Don't eat too much, don't drink too much. <laughs> you will be sick, you know, okay? Uh, and finally, in cosmology, it is philosophy of nature, huh? the whole of non-reasonable created being, huh? the whole world, it is what I told you here, huh? the universe, huh? the universe. Okay. Um, so a remark, three levels of the same definition. Huh? In logic, we saw that, huh? quantity, whatness, what is a thing? In metaphysics, essence, uh, that oneness or quantity as opposed to existence. A man definition does not include the idea of existence. In ethics, uh, in philosophy of nature, you can add that. Uh, the essence of principle of operation. Ethics, and you can add philosophy of nature. Uh, man must act according to his rationality, animality. He must act according to the laws of nature. That is the rational animal dimension. That is the, the word. The meaning of St. Thomas of the Church is not the meaning of the uh, physician today. Huh? Next paragraph, 17.2. Uh, nature can be identified with matter. And after that, we will see nature can be identified with form. Ah, you remember what we saw the first class? Matter and form. So we can see matter uh, it, it is is, uh, can be considered as nature. Matter is part of nature. Huh? It's a substratum of change. That means uh, there must be something material to change. There must be wood to pass from planks to desk. Okay? From what it has been said of nature, we can identify it with matter. As the substratum, huh? substratum, Sub under stra straight and strato stratosphere like the how do you say in English the uh, the level or the you know, word for that you see from the kush the layer huh? the layer substrat huh? um, of change as the passive that is important as the passive potential principle of being moved so matter is nature but as passive principle of change is not the active principle. It is determined, I said that with you before, huh? determined, or determined For example, the, the wood is determined to become a chair, to become a desk. Huh? He is passive, he receives a form. Huh? He receives a form, okay? Um, well, substratum, I already said, substance, huh? considered a subject of sense. We saw that, in fact, substratum is substance. Substance. Huh? Substance standing under the nine accidents. Okay? Uh, number three, material cause or passive subjective potency. Okay. So that is passive, huh? passive. That means matter by itself has, not, has no activity. It cannot be a principle of operation, but it can be a principle of passion. That means it can receive. It's a, it, potency means two things, don't forget. Potency means to act by action, but potency means also to receive. When you arrive in the class here, you have passive potency. In the sense that you can, Receive, but you are active because you react to that. You assimilate that. You understand. You make that your own knowledge. Hmm? That is that is teaching, huh? uh, uh, studying. Okay. 
Uh, page 123, remark, the three remarks are very important. I will read that. First, the mother, uh, substratum of change, that means what is under change, uh, the word substratum means that, uh, what is under change, uh, from which becoming precedes. I uh, know a new word, important word, the becoming. Becoming, it is the word to express what is change, changing or becoming, coming to be. Huh? <laughs> Coming to be, becoming means that, huh? coming to be. Okay? Um, is always determined mother, second mother, you understand? Second mother is not prime mother. Secondly, the substantial form currently possess, determining the matter in a particular way, always limits and define matter's immediate potentialities. So, what is the role of the form? The role of the form, it is to determine, to actualize. Huh? So the form is determining, is actualizing huh? the passive matter, the passivity of the matter. So the form make the pa matter passing from passivity, potency, huh? to act. Huh? To act. It is because of its substantial form that the material being is able to do any act. My cat can run after mouse because he has, it has a substantial form. It is because of its substantial form, the soul, huh, that man can think and speak, will love, etc. The, three, the third point, since the form already possessed by the matter, in the case of second matter, prime matter already determined, huh? can be the source of certain activity as well. So sometimes the form already possessed by the matter. That means, in, in, in some reality, the matter is, is already, uh, the form is already in the matter. For example, in you, in my, in myself, the matter, my form is there. Huh? Okay? Um, it's, it's activity of the matter, for example, the activity of my body, my body is my matter, huh? okay. may run contrary to the aim of the agent that acts upon it. That means, interesting, in the case of man, my body sometimes can act contrary to what I want. No? I want to study, but my body wants to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But what is interesting here? Uh, anybody, anybody um, in the living being, I don't speak about uh, even the material, but the living body, the, the body, which is the matter, will react, excuse me, will react uh, in regard of an object, uh, or react of an object. In, in fact, here, um, for example, my eye. If I see nothing, I have no reaction. But if there is a light, huh, my eye will react. That means it will not react by itself. But it will react if there is an object. So even my mother will react. Why? Why? Because also because it is animated by the, 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 the soul and the form. But that means the, the react, what, is one, what we want to say here, the reaction in a living body, in a living thing, a dog, a cat, or a person, the reaction is from the body. But the, but the, rea the reaction is not coming only from the body, it might be uh, uh, um, provoked by a stimulus, huh? by something, uh, something external. So that, that means uh, the body, or the matter, will not react if there is no object. Secondly, it will not react if it is not animated by the form. In fact, what we can say, my body, my matter, reacts only in the measure it is animated by the form. But it's not the form directly that reacts, it's my body. So my matter reacts. For example, if I, I, I touch here, my mother, my mother, that is mother, 
it will react as matter, but it reacts because it is activated by the form. A dead man, if he did that, he has no reaction. But it is the matter which reacts. If I have no matter, an engine, I can, can I punch an engine? I cannot punch an engine. <laughs> I cannot shake the end of an engine. The engine has nobody. That means the matter has a, 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 a passive role. It's, it's true, as a passive role. But, but because when, when the, pass, uh, the passivity of the matter, the potency of the matter, is affected by an object, in the living body, in the living even in, in, a, in material react, thing in the react. For example, you have a, a rubber, huh? and you, you can react. Suppose you have a, 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 a veil, you, you throw a stone in the veil, and, uh, in, in the web, and then it will react. It will not stay in moving. You know, action, reaction. But it, it, it does not react by itself. It reacts only because you receive something from outside. We react because we receive something from outside, but because we are active, activated by the soul. You know, if, well, uh, if I, I throw, uh, I, I throw the, the chuck on the board, okay? Well, the board, is, of course, here is not very really reacting, but sometimes material things react. Huh? They react. They react because they, they're, they're, they're matter, huh? uh, because of mechanic, mechanical uh, laws, they will react. Uh, uh, spring, for example. Okay? But we react because we are at the same time body and so We are at the same time matter and form. So I, I, I must ask matter to react. If it is cold, for example, you go outside, it is cold. Uh, so if your, your uh, matter, your body, is passive to receive, to receive the, the sensation of cold. But you react to that. And you react because you have a body animated by your soul. But you need a body. That means you need matter. In fact, matter and form, they are inseparable. Especially um, other animals, we believe that they do not have souls, right? Or an insect. No, no, they have souls. They have souls. They have a, a principle of life. They, we call antiliki or animal soul. Yes, they have a principle of life. They so can even, like, even like an insect would have a soul. Mm -hmm. So they're able to react. Yeah, they react, yes. If you touch a, a bee, it will react. Huh? Uh -huh. It will chuk, huh? <laughs> Yes, they, they have a soul, but they don't have a rational soul. Mm. They, they have a, you know, the soul is principle of life. Anima in Latin, huh? Anima, the principle of life. Um, modern, modern scientific, uh, scientific, scientist, like uh, Hans, um, why I forget the name, Hans, 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 Hans Drich, Hans Drich, Drich, D-I-D-S. <coughs> he speak on Dredge, he speak about antiliki huh? and principle of life. He, he cannot say the, the word soul because soul is a philosophical word. So he say principle, but it's the same. What is the, the what is the the soul is the is the act of the body, is the principle of activity. So it is true for every every living being. Living being, and they they react because, of course, they have a body, they have senses, but they react because also they are living. Because if I punch a, a dead man, he will not react. <coughs> yeah, he is in his, 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 his gasket. Is in, uh, no, I I I, have, I will venge. <laughs> he will not react. He's not living. You know? But he must have a body. To react, he must have a body. He must have matter. It's interesting to prove that matter and form are co principles in the living being. We cannot separate them. And, and to explain the motion of animal and insect, we must accept there is a substantial form. A form that makes them one. Because they have many, many members, many things. 
but they are one. How they can be one? I mean, a, a bird, for example, a dog, it can be many, can make many, many activities. It can make many things, huh? He is one dog. So how we can, it must be our principle of unity, a principle of, of life, one life, one, one dog, one, I don't say one person for a dog, but one unity, you know. Okay. We'll we come back on that in the one study philosophy of man, uh, spirituality of the soul, and so It's interesting because you see, what you study in uh, two months, or one week, live with that. We live continually, we will refer matter and form, act and potency, change, becoming, continually. Theology, philosophy is the foundation. It is the genius of Aristotle. It is Aristotle who discovered that. Aristotle who formulated the theory of matter and form, act and potency. It's a genius. For me, it's a kind of the greatest genius of the universe, uh, Aristotle. Because he discovered that the, the way of thinking, also. the law of metaphysics is, is it's a great, great, great man. Okay. Um, substantial form, now, at 17.3. Um, since substantial form is the principle of essential determination, huh? perfection, the source of activity, the end of generation, huh? it is obvious that substantial form deserves to be called nature or even more than matter. If matter is nature, form is much more nature. <laughs> matter is nature because we cannot be a human being or a cat without matter. But it is not only by that I am a cat or I am a, a, a man. I am a man, a cat, because I have a form. Huh? So the form is properly principle of activity, is the form, nature. Okay? Therefore, nature is an active principle of motion, motion movement. Huh? It is the substantial form. Substantial means one substance. We have one body, we have one form, one matter, one form, but we are one. Because what makes the unity of my person is not my body, it is my soul, my form. It is by my form that a thing is one. You know? It is not by the piece of wood that the disc is a disc. It is by the form given by the carpenter. You know? But the form in the disc is not living. The form in us is living, principle of life. The disc cannot move by itself. You know? But we can move because we are principle of life. Okay? So we call that substantial form. Uh, I continue. Activity of nature as form is twofold. First, it is the intrinsic source of the vital activity of the living body. That is the meaning of St. Thomas. Um, the, my nature is the, uh, my form, uh, by my form, my soul, uh, is the principle of all my living activities. Uh. And it is the intrinsic source of spontaneous activity in any given body. It is true first for animated body, uh, 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 an insect, a, a bird, a duck, etc., a microbe, <laughs> even Ebola. <laughs> even also, we have that spontaneity, we have a kind of um, activity also uh, in the, some uh, a chemical element. I told you that even in the atom, the atom we have. Uh, as we say, energy, huh? mm -hmm. turn at the f and they are so powerful. You know, with four gram of uh, four gram of uh, plutonium, we can make atomic bomb. Huh? Four gram, four gram. That means there is a, a huge power in those little gram of uranium. It's incredible. Huh? Interesting. It's not li it's not living, but they have power. And they can destroy Hiroshima, they can destroy Nagasaki. Huh? Okay. Um, inanimate bodies do not have differentiated organs. Consequently, they do not move themselves. Rather, their activities are directed to other bodies. Huh? For example, metal is directed to oxygen to become rust. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I will not insist on that. Huh? What is important for us? 
living bodies are in a spontaneous and immanent activity. Huh? Spontaneous and immanent activity. And that, because of that, we, my, my form huh, is the source, my nature is the source of my activity. My nature as a rational animal is the source of my action as a rational, as an animal. And I have to put my rationality in my animality. Okay. So next page, huh? in reality, the tendency within material object to fall, for example, is a reaction to action, action, reaction. You know? And in physics, we calculate that the, 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 the power of the action equal the power of the reaction. Now, the form as an end, that is important. Um, I explained that already when we study the four causes in the definition of logic. So it is something we see again, but you know, repetition is mother of learning. Huh? Okay, in understanding, I hope. I hope. So here, uh, the form as an end. Well, when I ask the carpenter, to build, a, to make a, to, yeah, to build, to make a desk, he has to, he has, he needs at the end of making a desk. Okay, I ask him. Okay, he say, okay, I will. The end of making a desk. Okay, the end is to make a desk. But when he said, I will make a desk, I want to make a desk. What he was have in his mind? the form of the desk. He must have, at the same time, have the form of the desk. So he must have the form, and the form will come the end of the desk. Huh? That means that there is a link between form. What is the form? We remember is the intrinsic cause, huh? formal cause, intrinsic cause, and the end is the extrinsic cause. That means the the, the, uh, the desk finish uh, correspond to the form of the desk in the mind of the... So we, we cannot separate that. So the form as... Uh, of the form of the desk that is first in the mind of the carpenter must be the same thing as the end. If I ask the carpenter, may, uh, I need a table. And came and one week after they come and give me a beautiful desk. I say, wow, well, the table, not a desk. <laughs> hmm. I mean, he does not understand, but it's a, a desk. You know, a table, I don't know. Huh? So then there is a correspondence between M and form. So because of that, we saw just before, we saw that the form is, uh, is the, the express the nature, huh? the, the nature. Of, so we can say also there is a link with the end. Huh? The nature is linked with the end. In fact, there is a principle um, in uh, metaphysics, we will see, because the principle of sufficient reason. So then everything that exists has a reason why, has a reason why. We don't know all the time. And when we want to know the reason why, what we are searching, we have to search the nature of that. We try to find the definition, and to find the definition, uh, to, to try the form of a thing, one of the, the way it is to use the final cause. If I want to know what is an armor, I must know the armor is to fix, <laughs> is to fix a nail, is not to cut the meat. Uh, not the same thing. Okay. Okay. I, I go to the text. Here. A natural power as a Positive inclination to enact. A natural power has a positive inclination to enact. I told you just before that our powers uh, in the subject, for example, my senses, my eyes, my imagination, my intellect, all that, uh, I will, they are powers, they are in potency, they are power to act, to do something. Uh, uh, not only to exist, act, uh, the first meaning of uh, act is to exist. And the second meaning of act is operation. Huh? Operation, operation are acts also. 
but they are secondary acts. Because the first act is to exist. If you don't exist, you cannot do other things. You cannot speak, you cannot talk, you cannot uh, sing, etc. You have to exist first. Is the reason why all the action, we call action, they are secondary act. Okay? Well, that is not a, I continue. Uh, two things. First, that perfects and that uh, inclination, positive inclination to act, huh? perfects or fulfills the individual being so inclined. For example, the human will tend to, to do good, huh? or one thing to be good. Huh? The intellect, human intellect, is thirsty huh? for truth and knowledge. Eyes tend to perceive. That means my power, my, if they <coughs> exist, they have a reason for that. If I have eyes, there must be a reason for that. And it's to see, you know? So, in fact, there is a relation between the end and the nature of a thing. There is a, re a relation between the end and the nature of a thing. And many times we know the nature of a thing from the end, the effect. We cannot know the negative many times, the nature of the thing. In fact, we know the through the operation. Because the, what is the end is the fruit of the operation. For example, I go to, uh, in your kitchen, I see a be beauty, two beautiful pies. Huh? Well, it, it, if the pies are there, are there, there must be a sufficient reason to explain their existence. Huh? There must be a cook, there must be a reason for that. So I can, I can find the nature of the activity from the end realized in the pie. I can say, is not, a, is not, a, is not a carpenter who did that. Is not a big. Is not a, a singer. Is not a painter. Is a cook. So I can see the nature of the thing from the end attained. Common sense, no? There is no reason why huh? we say the form as an end is called nature. The form as an end. Okay. I continue. B. All else contribute to the good of the species, of the whole nature. The power of reproduction, for example, attains completely its end when it assures the continuation of the species. That means the end can be for the individual, the end can be also for the species. For, the species. Uh, for others. For example, uh, you study. Well, you study, there is an end. But is the end only for you? If you become a priest, a deacon, or a teacher, or a nurse, in fact, the end is for the species. It's for to make other better, no? So the end is for the individual, and the end is for the species. And we can know the nature of a thing from the end attained. For example, if I, I go to the museum, I see La Mona Lisa, the, I see Mona Lisa with the smile, huh? she, she never changed, it's always the same smile. But people come from Japan, from China, from, they have to wait three hours to look, a few minutes to Mona Lisa, imagine, but it's a, it's a fact, huh? it's a fact. Huh? So that is an, it, it is an end, it is an effect, the effect, that means when we, I can start from that, and to go to the nature of the cause of the one who did that, you know, the nature of the... Because in the painting, not only is an end, because it was the end of the painter, but it is the form also. So what was the idea? I, I can start from that to find the idea of Leonardo da Vinci, when he did something. I, I, suppose I, I, you see a, a, a sculpture or uh, anything, made by, by men, an artifact, huh? an artifact. You, you study uh, in the cave, you go in the cave, you, you find an artifact. Or, uh, or you find some, some uh, drawing, etc., on the wall. From the, that, the man who did that, he had an end. He put a form in, of his mind in that. So I can start from, from the, the, the end, the effect, and go to the form 
What was the idea of the man at that time? It is what we do when we read a text. Huh? A man writes a book, a novel. It is the end of his work. And from that, you can go to the idea of that man. You can say that man had such idea because he wrote that. So the nature of a thing can, is, is linked with the end of a thing. The nature of a power is linked with the end of the power. And the end of the power is linked with the form. And we saw that the form is, is really the nature of a thing. What determines the, the nature of a thing? First, it is his form. What determines my, my uh, being? It is my soul, huh? my form. But because of my form, it, the idea I have, I can put that in the paper or sculpture or, uh, or language. And from that effect, from that end, because the effect is an end, there is no effect without uh, it, huh? an end. So that from that end, I can find the form that need to, to go back to the nature of the person. Is there a reason why we can know when, if we go to a cave, we can know if those people were intelligent or not, they were human or not. How the pantheologists, they can say that men, uh, one million year ago was intelligent if discover some end, some effect uh, in the tomb or in the cave, you can say at that time they were intelligent. Because if they can't be able to put a form in the thing, that means the form was in thy mind. So we can we know the 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 value the va the value of an author from his works. Huh? I know the, the teacher knows <laughs> the value of the student uh, through the game. You know? How we can know that the, the, the Yankees are better than the, uh, than the, the Red Sox? You can do that or no? <laughs> through when they attain the goal, the end. And from the end, you see they are good player. If they, the, the end is not good, they are not good player. You know? It's common sense. Huh? But sometimes, you know, we forget that. We forget common sense. Yeah. So nature acts for an end. That is important. Because of that, if... if